Hi everyone, welcome to Singing How to Study Chinese. This is HSK Level 1 course, and I am your teacher, Ronnie. Today we are going to learn lesson 10. 我能坐这儿吗? 我能坐这儿吗? Which means, can I sit here? Okay, now let's move on to our warm up. Warm up. There are six pictures and six new words. And first, let's see this one is 工作. 工作. 工作, which means job. We are really familiar with it already. Okay, next one is 看书. 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 看, we've learned it means look, watch, read, and sometimes even visit. And 书 means book, so 看书 is read book. Okay, next one is 做. 做. This one is a new one, it means to sit or to be seated. And next one is 桌子. 桌子. This means desk. Desk. Next one is 电脑. 电脑, which means computer. And last one, really easy. 爸爸和妈妈. 爸爸和妈妈. 爸爸, we know, it means father. Mama means mom, and he actually means and. So this means father and mother. Now let's try to fill in the blanks. I will give you 10 seconds. Okay, time's up. First one, 工作. 工作 is... F because it looks like these four people are discussing something in the office. Next one, 看书, really easy is C. Next, 坐, to sit, to be seated is B. Exactly, and 桌子, the desk is A. Next one, 电脑 is D. And last one, 爸爸和妈妈, obviously, is E. Okay, let's move on to our text one. Text one. Let's first see the new words. This one, 桌子, we've seen it in the warm-up part. 桌子, read up to me, please. 桌子, 桌子. Z is the neutral tone. Please pay attention to it, neutral tone. 桌子, 桌子. Okay, it means desk, table. Still remember how to say chairs. Chairs, okay. Chairs are easy, right? Easy, okay. Read up to me. Easy, easy. This is chairs. Chairs, okay. Easy. Next, let's say under the table. Under the table. How to say under the table? We've learned something under something before. The under surface of something. Under space. The lower space of something is 下 or 下面, right? 下 or 下面. So under the table is 桌子下面. 桌子下面, okay? 桌子下面. Actually, it means 桌子的下面, okay? You can just... Try to remember 桌子下面 as 桌子的下面. Okay, this is under the table. Next one is 上, 上, 上. This one, although here it is marked as a neutral tone, but it is used, uh, when it is used individually, 上 is a fourth tone word, fourth tone. But because in this text, Shang is combining with other elements in the sentence, so it is neutral tone, okay? It, it, when it is used individually, please remember it is fourth tone, fourth tone. And it means up and above, up and above. Actually, we've come across this character many times before. For example, like in the morning is Shang Wu, right? Or to say, 早上, this two way to express morning. In these two words, we all have 上, this character inside it. And so we already know how to say under, 
under that is xia nian or xia then how to say upper space or upper surface upper surface it, it is shang nian right shang nian shang nian or shang shang nian or shang so how to say on the desk on the desk it is the shang mian or the shang. Okay, the shang mian or the shang. Okay, very good. Next one is dian nao de yan dian ne ao nao dian nao. Read after me, please. Dian nao, dian nao, dian nao. Please pay attention to the nao. It is a third term word, but because it is in a disorbic word, so we will read it as a half. Third tone, okay? Dian now, Dian now. Okay, means computer, computer. And how to say one computer? One computer. We've learned how to express this kind of structure. It is the number plus a major word and plus the none we want to describe. So one computer is Dian now. When we are not familiar with this word and we don't know which major word we are going to use, then we can use ge, the general major word, okay? So, 一个电脑, 一个电脑 means one computer. Okay, now let's move on to the next word. 和, 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 read after me, please. 和, 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 it means end, end. So whenever you want to express A and B, you can say A he B. A he B. Okay. This is the way to say A and B. For example, in the warm-up part, we've learned father and mother, which is Baba he Mama. Baba he Mama. Okay. So let's move on to next word, which is Ben Bo N. Ben, read after me, please. Ben, Ben, Ben. It is a major word for notebooks or books or everything other looks like a book. Okay. So, for example, how to say one book? One book. We will use the structure again the number plus a major word and plus the none we are going to describe. So, 一本书, right? 一本书, 一本书, okay, this is the answer. So if you don't understand why I changed the E into E, please go back to check your notebook and see there are tones Sandy about E, okay, tones Sandy about E, 一本书, okay. Now how to say one Chinese book? A Chinese book. Then it is Iban Han Yu Shu Iban Han Yu Shu. Try not to say Zhong Guo Shu because in this word Chinese book. Chinese means the language, not the nationality. So we will use Han Yu instead of Zhong Guo. Okay, so it is Iban Han Yu Shu instead of Okay, next one. When I want to say two Chinese book, is it urban Han Yu Shu ma? Is it? A? No, it's not er, it is Liang Ben. Okay, Liang Ben. Le Yang Liang. Le Yang Liang. Pay attention to it. When we are counting numbers in Chinese, when we are saying one, two, three, four, in this way, we will use two, we will use er. But when we are saying there are two things, two books, two days, two years, then we will use liang, okay? For example, liang ben shu, liang ge dian nao, liang tian, tian means days, liang ge yue, yue means months, liang Nian, nian means years. So, as you can see, you are using liang instead of er. Okay, please pay attention to it. 
And I'm trying to say, I want to buy a Chinese book. I want to buy a Chinese book. It is 我想买一本汉语书. For this sentence, the subject is 我爱. And then the predicate is want to buy something, right? Want to buy a Chinese book. And inside it, the modal verb want to is 想 and buy is 买. So 想买. And a Chinese book is 一本汉语书. So this sentence is 我想买一本汉语书. Okay, now let's move on to our last new word for text one is 礼. When it is used individually, it is a third tone word, third tone. But inside this text, it is when it is used with other elements, it is a neutral tone. Please read after me. Li, li, li. Okay, means inside something or inner interior. Okay, inside something. So when I say jia li, jia li, it means inside home, in home. So how to say in school? In school. It is 学校里, 学校里, very good. And in hospital is 医院里, 医院里, the word we learned in last lesson. And how to say in desk, in the desk. We just learned it. It is 桌子里, right? 桌子里, okay? How to say inside the computer? Inside the computer, it is 电脑里, 电脑里. Very good, very good. Now let's try to read it from the start each word twice. Three, two, one. 桌子, 桌子, 上, 上, 电脑, 电脑, 和, 和, 本, 本, 里, 里. Okay, now let's move on to our text. I will read it and please listen carefully. 桌子上有什么? 桌子上有一个电脑和一本书? 杯子在哪儿? 杯子在桌子里? Okay, now let's see sentence by sentence. First one, 桌子上 桌子上 is the simplified way to say 桌子上面, okay? 桌子上 is just enough to express our meaning, our intention. Okay, 桌子上, on the table. 有什么? 有 means have, and it is indicating the existence of things, existence. So 有什么 means there be something, there be something. So it actually means what, what are there on the desk? What are there on the desk? Okay, 桌子上有什么? So we can see here, first is the location. And then there is a verb. And then there is an object. Okay, location. On the location, there be, there be something. Okay, this is the structure of how to express Something on something. Next one is 桌子上有 You can see on the table there are 一个电脑和一本书 一个电脑 means a computer 和 Here it is the new word and and 和一本书 A computer and a book 一个电脑和一本书 and it asked again, 杯子在哪儿? 杯子在哪儿? It is the structure we've learned before about expressing how to ask about where is something or someone. Something or someone. 杯子在哪儿? Means where is the cup? Where is the cup? So this is the subject plus 在哪儿? Okay, the subject plus 在哪儿? Next is 杯子在桌子里. 杯子在桌子里. 
Face is in the desk. Is in the desk. Face 在桌子里 So this is something at something at somewhere. Okay, this is the structure. Something at somewhere. Okay, really easy. So now let's try to read it from the start. Read after me, please. 桌子上有什么？桌子上有一个电脑和一本书。杯子在哪儿？杯子在桌子里。Okay, now let's try to read it in rows. I will be A and you will be B. Okay, three, two, one. 桌子上有什么？杯子在哪儿？ Okay, let's switch the row. Three, two, one. 桌子上有一个电脑和一本书。杯子在桌子里。Okay, this is text one. Now let's move on to our next text. So we can see here are two new words and two proper nouns. First one is 前面。前面七言前，末言面。We see 面 here, which is really familiar. We learned it from 上面 and 下面 right? 上面 and 下面 And here, 前面 means front, front. And next one, 后面和 o 后后面 means back, back. So we've learned four words about spaces. One, 上面 One, 下面 Another one, 前面 Another one, 后面 Okay, 上面下面前面后面 Okay, try to read with me. Okay, 上面上面下面下面前面前面后面后面 Okay, very good. So try to make some sentences. How to say in the front? In the front. In the front is we've learned in at on is 在 right? So in the front is 在前面在前面 Okay, this is this is in the front 在前面 Okay, if I want to say in the at back, at the back, then it is 在后面 Yes, 在后面在前面 and 在后面 Okay, my front. Try to say my front. My front. 我的前面 right? And in this phrase, you can just get rid of the 的 You can just say 我前面我前面 Okay. Now try to say. My back, my back. It is 我后面我后面 Next one. He is in my front. He is in my front. So in this sentence, who is the subject? He, right? He. So we will put he at the beginning of the sentence. So 他 Next one, we will need a predicate. Predicate, which is. Be in on at somewhere, right? Be in on at. We need that, which is 在在 So 他在 And the location, the direction is my front, my front. So let's put the direction at the last, which is 我前面 So this sentence is 他在我前面 The subject, the verb, and the location. Okay. So try to say he is at my back. He is at my back. Then it is, 他在我后面 right? 他在我后面 Okay. Now try to say, um,、mm, the one in the front, the person in the front, the person in the front. 
This one is a little bit tricky. It is, it is a phrase, it is not a sentence. The person in the front. So the in the front is actually describing the person, right? Describing the person. So we will put this part at the before the person, okay? So it is 前面的人, 前面的人. So in this phrase, actually, we are using 前面的 as an adjective to describe 人, okay? 前面的人. So the person at back actually is 后面的人, right? 后面的人, 后面的人. Or if you want to specifically just point in someone, which is that person, for example, that first person in the front, then we can say 前面那个人, 前面那个人, okay? 前面那个人, that person in the front, 前面那个人, and that person at the back is 后面那个人, okay? 后面那个人. Try to say the person, that person in the front. Listen carefully. That person in the front is Teacher Lee. That person in the front is Teacher Lee. How to say that? It is first that for that person in the front. How to say that is 前面那个人, right? 前面那个人, and is Teacher Lee is. 是李老师,so前面那个人是李老师,okay,前面那个人是李老师. And now try to say, the person at the back, that person at the back is my friend. That person at the back is my friend. 后面那个人, right? 后面那个人是我朋友。后面那个人是我朋友, okay, that is enough for the two new words. Now let's move on to our proper nouns. One is 王方, 王方, read up to me please, 王方, 王方, it's a, it's a name in Chinese, and in this name, 王 is the family name, the last name, and 方 is the first name. So we can see in Chinese, we will put the last name, the family name at the beginning. And then we will say the, say our first name. And usually, usually Chinese names are two characters or three characters, okay? Sometimes it will be four characters or more. But mostly, mostly Chinese names are two to three characters. And for ethnic minorities, their names will be much longer. Okay, so this is Wang Fang. Next one is Xie Peng. Read up to me, please. Xie Peng. Xie Peng. So try to guess which one is the last name. It is Xie. Xie is the last name, and Peng is the first name. Okay, very good. Now let's try to read from the start each for twice. Okay, three, two, one. 前面, 前面. 后面, 后面. Okay, now let's move on to our text. I will read it and please listen carefully. 前面那个人叫什么名字? 他叫王芳, 在医院工作. 后面那个人呢? 他叫什么名字? 他叫谢鹏, 在商店工作. Okay, in this text, we can see there are many structures we've learned before. Okay, first one is 前面那个人叫什么名字? 前面那个人叫什么名字? 前面那个人, we already learned it, it means the person in the front. And 叫什么名字 is, is a structure we've learned before we mentioned. What is this person's name? 叫什么名字? What is the name? What is the name? 叫什么名字? So this is asking about the person in the front. Who is this person in the front? And B answered. 
Ta Jiao Wang Fang. Her name is Wang Fang. Her name is Wang Fang. Zai Yi Yuan Gong Zuo. Let's see it. Zai a place. Do something. This is the structure we've learned before. In there, it is the the series of verb, the verbs in series, right? Zai is the verb one, and Gong Zuo is the verb two, and Yi Yuan is the location for Zai. And when sometimes this location, when it is not that important, we can get rid of it, ignore it. Okay, 在医院工作 working at the hospital. In this sentence, working at the hospital, hospital is very important information, so we won't omit it. Next one, 后面那个人呢？后面那个人 the person at the back, and 呢？ No, which means it is asking about something mentioned before, or the time, or the location of this subject. So in this sentence, it is really obviously we are asking about the things mentioned before. For example, like what name and where does this person work, right? No, no, and 他叫什么名字 What is his name? 他叫什么名字 And the last sentence, 他叫谢鹏 His name is 谢鹏在商店工作 He work in the shop. He work in the shop. 在 a place do something do something. Okay. Now let's try to read it from the start. Read after me. 前面那个人叫什么名字？他叫王芳。在医院工作。后面那个人呢？他叫什么名字？他叫谢鹏，在商店工作。Okay, now let's read it in the row. I will be A and you will be B. 前面那个人叫什么名字？后面那个人呢？他叫什么名字？ Okay, let's switch the row. Three, two, one. 他叫王芳，在医院工作。他叫谢鹏，在商店工作。Okay, very good. Now let's move on to text three. There are four new words. First one is 这儿，这儿，这儿 ，which means here, here. We've already learned how to say there. Remember how to say it? It is 那儿 right? 那儿 So we can see here is this plus a. 而这 plus 而 and there is 那 plus 而 that plus 而哪儿 and where? How to say that? Where is 哪儿 right? 哪儿 okay, very good. 哪儿 now、I'll、try to say your book is here. Your book is here. Your book is here. This is. 你的书 is your book, right? 你的书 and is here is 在这儿，在这儿 Every time we wanna express the location, we will use 在 okay, 在你的书在这儿 Okay, next one is 没有木 a 没有有没有 Read after me, please. 没有没有 Okay, so pay attention to this yo. We should read it as half the tone, right? And we can also say just may, may you or may these two can can both express there is nothing, there is not something. Okay, there is not. For example, there is not Chinese book. There is not Chinese book. There is no Chinese book, which is. 没有汉语书 ，OK， 没有汉语书。If you wanna say there is not something, there is nothing, you just say 没有 plus that thing, OK? For example, try to make a sentence this time, not phrase. 
I don't have Chinese book. I don't have Chinese book. It is. 我 don't have 没有汉语书。我没有汉语书。I don't have Chinese book. And I don't have Chinese friend is 我没有中国朋友。Okay, 我没有中国朋友。And there is no one, no people, 没有人。And here is no one. There is no one here. It is 这儿没有人。Okay, 这儿没有人。Here is no one. It is just like the way we said. We learned in text one, like 桌子上有什么 It is 这儿没有什么 Okay, this is the same structure. We will put the location at the beginning. Okay, the location. Next one is 能能能 Read up to me, please. 能能 It is a modal verb, which means be able to do something. Be able to do something. Can may. Can may, and we learned another mode of verb which has a really similar meaning with it, which is 会 right? 会 it means to acquire an ability by learning, by learning. And 能 is can may, can may. The last one is 做自我做 read after me, please. 做做 we've seen it in the warm up part. It means to sit or to be seated, to be seated. So when I say 请坐，请坐 we've learned 请 which means please, please. So 请坐 means please sit, please sit. Okay. So I want to say please sit here, please sit here. Then it is 请坐这儿，请坐这儿 Please sit here. 请坐这儿 Okay. Now let's try to read it from the start. Okay. Each for twice. Three, two, one. 这儿，这儿，没有，没有，能，能，做，做。Okay, now let's move on to the text. I will read it and please listen carefully. 这儿有人吗？没有。我能坐这儿吗？请坐。Okay, this text is really easy. First, it is asking about is there anyone, which means is this seat taken? Can I sit here? Can I sit here? 这儿有人吗？这儿有人吗 ？Here, anybody here? And you is expressing the existence existence of something. And 没有没有 we just learned there is not. It is the negative form of 有 negative form of 有 okay. So 有 For you, the negative form is 没有 It is not 不有 okay? It's not 不有 It's 没有 Next sentence: 我能坐这儿吗？我能坐这儿吗 ？Can I sit here? So 能 plus a verb means can do something. Can do something. And can I sit here? 我能坐这儿吗 ？The subject 我 the person is always at the beginning here. Okay. Last sentence is. 请坐 Please sit. Please sit. Okay. Now let's try to read it from the start. Read after me. 这儿有人吗？没有。我能坐这儿吗？请坐 Okay. Now let's try to read it in rows. I will be A and you will be B. 这儿有人吗？我能坐这儿吗？ Now let's switch the row. Please start. 没有，请坐。Okay, very good. Now let's move on to our language point. First one is 有 the 有 sentence, which indicates the existence. Okay, indicating the existence. So this verb 有有 Can be used in some sentences to indicate a person or something exist, exist. And for example, this one, 椅子下面有一只小狗
椅子下面有一只小狗. So first we can see 椅子下面 is a word or a phrase of locality. So this is first part of this structure, location. And then we will put 有 here, 有. And then the things we want to say, the person will think. For example, 一只小狗, 一只小狗. Okay, this is the structure of it. And let's see next one. 学校里有一个商店. 学校里, another word for location. 学校里 means in the school, right? In the school. 学校里有一个商店. Next, 桌子上, on the table, the location, you have 一个电脑, a computer and a book. And this is the positive form of you. And when we are using the negative form of you, which is 没有, 没有, okay? There is something we need to pay attention to. For example, 椅子下面没有小狗. Let's see the difference. First is the 没有 is the negative form of you. Next one. The location is the same, is Xiamian. Okay. Next one, let's see Xiao Go and Yi Zhi Xiao Go. Let's see these two. What's the difference between them? What's the difference between them? In the positive form, we can see there is a numeral classifier, Yi Zhi, one, one dog, right? Yi Zhi, a number plus a measure word. But in the negative form, we cannot see the numeral classifier. So this is what we need to pay attention to in the pos in the negative form of you sentence, which is 没有, 没有, we won't use a numeral classifier before the non, before the object of this sentence. Okay, so for this one, in this one, non, we actually have a have a number and then a major word before the noun, okay? But for this, no numeral classifier, no numeral classifier, just location plus 没有, okay, plus 没有 something, 没有 something. This is the structure, this is the structure, okay? Now let's see another two sentences. Next one is 学校里没有商店. 没有商店. So before the 商店, we cannot see the numeral classifier. Next one, 桌子上没有电脑和书. So before the 电脑 and before the 书, there is no numeral classifiers like 一个 and even. Nothing, just 电脑和书. This is the you sentence indicating the existence, the location plus you or may you and plus the object. Next, next is about the conjunction 和, which means and, which means and. So and is 和 is used to connect two or two more elements in the sentence. So for example, first example we can see here is 我有一个中国朋友. 和一个美国朋友. You can see 和 is used to connect 一个中国朋友 and 一个美国朋友. 和 connected these two phrases. And we can see here. Next one is really special. 我家有三口人. 我家有三口人. It means there are three people in my family. 口 is the con Ko is the major word for family members, right? And Baba, Mama, Baba, Mama, There are three elements that in this sentence we need you to use he to connect. So in this situation, when there are more than one, more than two elements, we need he to connect. Then we will use he just between the last two elements between the last two elements. And the elements before, we will use this symbol, a dot, a dot, which is a slight pause 
uh, slide port mark to connect the other to connect or separate the other elements in that sentence. Okay. So this is it. Just use he in between the last two elements, okay? Don't use it in before, just one time. He will just show up one time. Next one, last example. 桌子上有一个电脑和一本书. This sentence is from our text. 一个电脑, one computer and a book, and a book. And pay attention to this part, this thing. He actually, although it means end, but the usage of it is not the same as the English end. He is not the same as end, okay? In English, end can use to connect two sentences, but he cannot. He can only use to connect two words, two elements, two phrases, not sentences. So if you say, 我爸爸是医生, 和我妈妈是医生 is wrong in Chinese, although it is okay in English. So, for example, my father is a doctor and my mother is a doctor. It's normal. There's nothing wrong with this sentence in English, but in Chinese, no, it's wrong. We won't say that. We will only say, 我爸爸和我妈妈是医生. Okay, 我爸爸和我�ma. There are two elements, two small elements, not sentences. Okay, but 我爸爸是医生 is a full sentence. 我妈妈是医生 is another full sentence. We won't connect these two using 和. Okay, this is what we need to pay attention to. Okay, now let's move on to the next one. The modal verb 能, 能, it is always used before the verb. And the structure it makes is 能, Plus a verb, okay, plus a verb. Neng means can do something, can do something. And the negative form of it is bu neng. We will put a bu before it, bu neng, okay. For example, this one, 明天下午我能去商店. 明天下午, tomorrow afternoon, 我能去商店. I am the subject, subject. Okay, subject, 能去, can go to the shop, can go to the shop. Okay, next one is a question. 你能在这儿写你的名字吗? Okay, let's see the structure of it. First one is the subject, 你, and then it's 能 plus a verb, 在, 能在. 在 can be a verb and it can be a preposition too. So this time it is a verb, 能在. 在 where, 在 here, 在这儿, 在这儿, what do what, 写你的名字吗? Can you write here? Okay, can you write here? So this is the question. So if you want to ask a question by using 能, then you just need to put a ma after this sentence and put a question mark after it, okay? This is the question, interrogative form of 能. And last one, 我能坐这儿吗? Can I sit here? I, 我 is the subject. 能 plus the verb, 坐, sit here, sit. Okay. And try to make a sentence. He cannot work. He can't work. This time we need to use the negative form of 能. So this is 他 不能工作, right? 他不能工作. The subject is 他, and then 不能, and then the verb 工作. And if I ask a question, can you study? Then how to say it? Can you study? It is 你能学习吗? Yes, 你能学习吗? Okay, now let's move on to next one. Next one is the imper imperative sentence with xin, xin. So imperative sentences are about um, giving an order and request, a request or prohibition or suggestions. This kind of sentences are imperative sentences. Okay, so after the qing, if we put a verb, then it makes an imperative sentence. And it is um, it can be form a polite suggestion or hope. Okay, let's see some examples. First one, 请写您的名字. 
Qing. After Qing, we put the verb xie, which means write. Qing xie, nin de ming zi. Please write your name. Nin, the polite way to say you. Okay, please write your name. Next one. Qing he cha. Please drink tea. Please drink tea. Qing zuo. Please sit. We can see this is really polite. Really polite to express your request. So when you are asking about someone, you can say Xing Wen, right? Xing Wen. Okay, this is about Xing. And next. Next, let's do some exercises. You can see first sentence. For first sentence, there is only Yo here and two blanks. Two blanks. And or we learned already yo means existence of something. And in you sentences, we will put the location plus a yo and then something, which means something exists on somewhere. Okay, let's see the picture. There is a table and a chair, and on the table there is a cup. So how to say it? How to say it? On the table there is a cup. So first, the location is on the table. So it is zhuo zi shang, right? Zhuo zi shang, the same as the text. Zhuo zi shang, yo, a cup is yi ge bei zi, yi ge bei zi, okay, yi ge bei zi. Next one is still yo, but we need to use he. He means and, which means we will connect to elements here. And before you, there is a location, right? Location. So try to fill in the blanks. We can see there is a desk and on the table, there are books and a, and a, and the computer. Okay, try to say it. On the table, 桌子上, 桌子上, 有书和 一个电脑, okay? 桌子上有书和一个电脑. Next one. It looks like in the pub, and one man is what asking about asking another man, and their facial expressions are really relaxed. Relax. 我能什么吗? 我能吗? It is, I think, some this person is asking about can I sit here, right? Can I sit here? So, 我能坐这儿吗? 我能坐这儿, sit here, 坐这儿. Okay, last one. 他在工作, he is working, he is working. So, how to say this? How to say this? How to say this? He is working. 他在商店工作, he is working in the shop, in the shop, so 他在商店工作, or we can say more specifically, 他在商店里工作, 商店里, he was working inside the shop, inside the shop, okay, 他在商店里工作, and next, let's move on to our, this exercise, new exercise, choose a suitable measure word to fill in each blank. Okay, I will give you, I will give you half a minute and try to fill in the blanks. Okay, time's up. Now let's see. First one. 我家有三什么人? 我家有 means there are three people in our family. So about the family, we will use the 口, right? We will use 口 for the family members. Next one. 我买一我的杯子? About 杯子, we can use a general measure word, which is 个. Next one. 我有五汉语书,五汉语书,汉语书,书, which is the measure word, 
fun, right? Fun. We just learned it today. Last one is a bashian. For the magic word of money is kuai or yuan. Okay, kuai. So this is the answers. Let's move on. Next part is the pronunciation of neutral tone syllables. Neutral tone syllables. For these neutral tone syllables, we actually have the pitch. The pitch will be different. Okay, first let's see these tables and the and the words. And please pay attention to the pitch when I when I am speaking. Okay, and I will use my hand to indicate the pitch. First one, zhuozi, zhuozi. We can see zi is the neutral tone, and the pitch of zi is lower than zhu, right? Zhuozi. Okay, next one is panzi. Panzi means plate. Plate. Panzi. The neutral tone is lower too, right? Next one is the chair. Yizi. Yizi. This time, neutral tone is higher. Last time, last one. Kuzi. Kuzi. This means trousers, pants. And kuzi. This time, the neutral tone is lower. So, this is the rule for it. When the neutral tone is after the first, second, and fourth, okay? First, second, and fourth tone, then the pitch of the neutral tone will be lower, okay, lower. But when it is after the third tone, the pitch of the neutral tone will be higher, okay? Read after me. Zhuozi, zhuozi, hanzi, hanzi. Yizi, yizi, kuzi, kuzi. Okay, now let's move on to next one. Just remember the rules. Next one, next part is the pronunciation of reduplicated syllables. For reduplicated syllables, it means there are two same syllables together. Especially, mm, there are two same characters put together and there's their their sound will be different. For example, first one is Baba. Baba. Two same characters, which means father, father. And this second ba is actually changing into the neutral tone. Okay, neutral tone. So this is in a disyllabic word with reduplicated syllables, the second one will usually be read in the neutral tone. Okay, neutral tone. And please don't forget the first rule we learned, the pitch about the neutral tone's pitch, it will change, right? Before, when the neutral tone is after, well, the first, second, and the fourth, it will be lower. So, ba ba, ba ba. Okay, let's try to practice next one. Read after me. Mama, mama, because it is after the first tone, so it is lower. Okay, next one is, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, second tone, so lower two. Next one, nine, 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 nine. It is grandmother, it is higher because it is after a third tone. Okay, try to read after me another one. This one, gurga, gurga, it's lower. Next, a uh, gurga means brother, older brother. Okay, next one, jie, 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 jie. it means. Sister, older sister, because it is after a third tone, so it's higher. Jie, jie. Next one is younger brother. Di, 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 di. Next, younger sister. Mei, 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 mei. Okay, so try to practice more and pay attention to the pitch of the, the reduplicated syllables, okay? Now let's move on. Move on to the pronunciation of words with the suffix. Men, zi, tou. So for these three characters, when they are used individually, they are men, zi, and tou. But when they are acting as a suffix, they're all neutral tone. Neutral tone. So for example, first one, ni men. We are really familiar with it. It means you, the plural version of it, plural version of you. Ni men. Men is the neutral tone. Next one, woman means we, right? Woman, neutral tone too. Let's see, zi, the suffix zi. Zhuozi, we just learned it today, means table, desk. 
Draw the, draw the. Z is the neutral tone. And is, we learned it in last lesson, which means chair. Is, z is the neutral tone too. Next one, 舌头, 舌头. Actually, tou is a second tone, but when it is a suffix, it is a neutral tone. 舌头, it means tongue, tongue. 舌头. Next one, 枕头, 枕头. See, the pitch is rising up. 枕头, it means pillow. Next one, 前头, 前头, 前头. It means front, in the front. Next one, 后头, 后头. 后头 is another way to say in the back, at the back, okay, 后头. So pay attention to the pitch of the neutral tone every time you come across the neutral tone, okay? Now, next one, let's see the single component characters. First one is 上, 上, which means up, above, 上. And it indicates the, actually, in, it indicates the borderline for the, for the upper space, okay? So let's see how to write it. First, we will write a vertical in the middle, and then a short horizontal in the middle of the vertical, and then a long horizontal. Try to write it again. It is really easy. Vertical, horizontal, and horizontal. Again, vertical, horizontal, horizontal. Please try to write it. Mm, don't try to write it like this. Don't make make this horizontal too long. And don't make this vertical too long. And don't make this too short, okay? To make it in a harmony. Next one is xia, which means down, down, below. Okay, this is just, just reverse shang. Okay, just reverse shang. First, we will write a long horizontal and a vertical. And then this time, it is not a horizontal, it's a dot. Okay, try to write it with me. Horizontal, vertical, dot. Again, horizontal, vertical, dot. It is really easy. So try to practice it more and pay attention to this. This is a dot and this is a horizontal. Next one is ben, the major word for books, ben. Okay. It looked like a tree. It looked like a tree in the ancient time. Okay. So first it is a horizontal and then a vertical and then a left turning and then a right turning and then a short horizontal. Now try to write it with me. Horizontal, vertical, left turning, right turning and then a horizontal. Next. Horizontal. Vertical, left turning, right turning, horizontal. Again, horizontal, vertical, left turning, right turning, horizontal. This is the ban, ban. And actually, this part means the roots of the tree in ancient time, ancient time. Next one is more, more or more. Why are we going to learn this? Because it is the opposite to ban. Ban is the root, the origin of something, and more. More is the tip, the end of something. So we can see in ancient time, these two look like the same, but the dot's position are different. In burn, the dot's position is at the root of the tree, but in more, this dot is at the tip of the tree, the tip of the tree, okay, the trenches. So this is about more. Now I'll try to see. How to write it? First, a long horizontal, okay? And then a short one under it. And then a vertical uh, left turning and a right turning. Try to write it with me. Long one, short one, or vertical left, right. Again, long, short, vertical left, right. Again, long, short, vertical left, right. So try to pay attention to it. Don't write the long one under the short one because that will be another character, which means the filter or undone. Okay, this is not more, it is we. This one is we, it's not more. Now let's see next one, next new word. 
Uh, so this is about the characters, the structure of the characters. Last time we learned the half enclosure, half enclosure. This time is the full enclosure one, full enclosure, complete enclosure. The first, the first example is four, si. We can say this frame here is closing the four, right? It is closing it. And next one, for the country, guo, this structure is closing it too. So we can say it is the full closure, full closure structures. I will write it bigger and you can see it clearer. This frame outside it is closing the character. And for guo is the same. The rectangle is closing this, the rectangle outside. Okay, this is the full enclosure, complete enclosure structure. This one is really easy to remember and really easy to distinguish. And the last part of today's lesson is the Chinese radicals to new radicals. First one is the guo zi kuang. We just seen it in the guo, guo zi kuang. Guo means country, guo means country, and zi means character, kuang means frame. So this is the radical. Radical this. It looks like ko, right? But it is different. This one is bigger and ko is smaller, like this, if compared to guozhuang, radical ko. Okay, so this guozhuang is usually meaning being trapped or being besieged. For example, like this, guo, guo. Actually, guo has borders, country has borders. So we use this frame, this radical to express country. Next one, kun. Kun, kun, it means to be trapped. If you wanna trap something, then you will use something like this to trap. So this is why we use guozhuang to make this character, kun, to trap. And next one is shi zi pang, shi, shi zi pang. Okay, this, this radical is actually a variant of this character, which is shi. That's why it is called shi zi pang, shi zi pang. And it is usually related to some rituals, rituals, sacrificial rites or something. And first one is shi, shi. It means to look, to look, to view, okay, to look to view. Please pay attention to this word. We might come across it with it in next lesson, okay? Shi, to look, to reveal. Next one is zhu, to wish, to wish. And in ancient time, this uh, to wish something is, this action is conducted by the witches. That's why we will have this shi zipang, shi radical aside it, okay? This is these two radicals for today. One is guo zi kuang, which means trap border. One is shi zi pang, which means, which is always related to the rites, the rituals, okay? So this is all for today's lesson. Thanks for listening. See you next time. Bye-bye.